In this video, I brought back every MVP in NFL history. Now, I only put them on the team that they won MVP on. So guys like Tom Brady are not going to be on the Buccaneers because he only won MVP on the Patriots. Now, for the ratings, I used Mutt as a template if they were never in the game from Madden 99 onwards. So guys that won MVP like in the 70s, the 80s, if they had a Mutt card, then I used that as a reference, you know, to give them 99 overalls. But regardless, every Every single MVP in this video got a 99 and none of their face scans are going to be accurate because I mean, come on, Madden does not have the exact face scan. So if you, that bothers you, you don't have to watch. Anyways, if you're sticking around, let's get it right to it. Also ignore the experience, man. I just clicked random players and changed everything else. Okay. So even though it says rookie, Walter Payton didn't win as a rookie. He won in 1977 for the Chicago Bears, only a couple years after his rookie season. So now he's by far the best player on the current Chicago Bears. The Bengals had two MVPs in their franchise history. First was Ken Anderson in 1981 and Boomer Esiason in 1988. Two 99 overall quarterbacks. Burroughs demoted to third string. Ooh. Same exact situation as James Cook because OJ Simpson is now at running back one for the Buffalo Bills and he has two gloves on. <laughs> Not to mention Thurman Thomas. They won MVP in 1973 and 1991 respectively so now josh allen has 299 overall running backs in his backfield to work with another franchise with multiple mvps is the denver broncos john elway won back in 1987 and then terrell davis who says he's a rookie but once again ignore that because he won when he was a fourth year starter and he had 2,000 yards from scrimmage in 1998 and their most recent mvp was Peyton Manning back in 2013. I can't believe it's been 10 years already. But now Denver has three new 99s on their roster. The Browns had multiple MVPs. At quarterback, Brian Seif won the award in 1980. So he's their new starter and one of the best to ever do it. Jim Brown won MVP three times, including back to back the first two MVPs ever in 1957 and 58. Cleveland all of a sudden is looking extremely stacked. The Buccaneers, the first franchise in this video that does not have an MVP. Same situation as the Arizona Cardinals, but the Chargers are going to bring back the first LT of the video. LaDainian Tomlinson won MVP back in 2006. Herbert now has a 99 overall running back. Not to mention Eckler still on the team. This offense is going to be insane. The Chiefs MVP is already on the team and he's already a 99 overall. Patrick Mahomes, two-time MVP. MVP winner in 2018 and 2022 so their team stays the same but the Colts team is uh, a lot different now first we have a three-time MVP winner Johnny Unitas 1959 64 and 67 he won the award and then we have Earl Morrall who won the award in 1968 one year after Unitas and then eight years later Burt Jones won the award in 1976 and the only player to win back-to-back -back MVPs twice in his career Career. the sheriff Peyton freaking Manning he will be the starter for the Indianapolis Colts but they're the only team that can boast that they have 499 overall quarterbacks as a matter of fact not many teams can say they have even one but Washington is not one of those teams Joe Theismann leading the way he won MVP back in 1983 just one year before the first and only kicker in NFL history to win the award Mark Mosley brought it home for Washington but one decade before that, the first MVP in Washington's history was Larry Brown. In 1972, he made a hat. So don't look now, but hey, that's a pretty solid squad the Commanders got. The only MVP in Dallas Cowboys history, believe it or not, was Emmett Smith in 1993. So now you have him and Pollard in the backfield behind that elite O-line. Gonna be tough to stop. Speaking of tough to stop, Dan Marino in this day and age would have been insane. And now he gets to throw to Tyree Kill. Look out for Miami to go on a deep playoff run. My Eagles did not have any MVP in franchise history. The Falcons one and only MVP was Matty Ice in 2016. He bought the award home for ATL. So now Kyle Pitts has an elite quarterback to throw him to football. Now I gotta be honest with you guys. It's my birthday week and I'm really not young anymore. So I don't really need any presents. All I ask is that you like the video. Can we make this the most liked video? in Matt
Madden 24 so far. We barely reach 1,000 anymore. I, I would love if you guys could at least get me there. Steve won MVP for San Francisco back in 1992 and 1994. John Brody won MVP for the Niners back in 1970. But the GOAT before the GOAT, Joe Montana won MVP twice in 1989 and 1990. He will be leading the way for arguably the most stacked roster in this experiment. One of the first MVPs in NFL history, YA Tittle, brought the award back to New York for the Giants, and he's going to be starting at QB for them. But there's only been two MVP award winners on the defensive side of the ball, and the G-Men have one of them. Lawrence Taylor, LT, who a lot of people consider the best defensive player ever, is going to be leading the way for the G-Men. The Jaguars, another franchise that has yet to have an MVP winner. Same thing with the New York Jets, but the Lions have one of the best running backs of all time back on their roster. Barry Sanders, who won MVP back in 1997. All of a sudden, him with Amon Rudd Golf and company behind a great old line. Lions are looking scary. Now, there's only one franchise in NFL history that has five MVPs, and that's the Green Bay Packers. You have Bart Starr, who won it in 1966. Jim Taylor, who won it in 1962. Paul Horn who won it in 1961. And then we had Brett Favre, who was the first and only three-time in a row MVP winner in NFL history from 1995 to 1997. The award was his, but the starter for Green Bay has to be one of only two guys to win MVP four times in their career, Aaron freaking Rodgers, who won it in 2011, 2014, 2020, and 2021. Five 99s added to the pack roster they have to go deep in the postseason carolina is bringing back superman cam newton who won mvp in 2015 the roster looks a lot different but i think he can make some magic happen similar situation to tom brady the goat three-time mvp winner all in new england so that's where he resides in this video one last reunion with belichick the raiders have three mvps in their franchise history ken stabler who won it in 1974 Marcus Allen, one of the best to ever do it, won it back in 1985. And then most recently, Rich Gannon, who won it in 2002. He'll be leading the way for the roster, throwing to Devontae, handing it off to Allen. The Raiders might be elite again. The Rams got some nice additions on their offense since they had three MVP winners. Roman Gabriel, the first one in 1969. And then they had Kurt Warner, who won it in 1999 and 2001. Not to mention one of the best dual threat running backs to ever live. Marshall Falk, who won MVP in 2000. They got Cooper Cup healthy. Warner's going to be throwing to him and Nakua. Don't sleep on the Rams. The only MVP in Ravens history is Lamar Jackson, who won it back in 2019. We boosted him up to a 99. The Saints didn't have any MVPs. Breeze was close a couple times. The Seahawks had Sean Alexander, who won it back in 2005. The only MVP in Seattle history. Pittsburgh had one MVP by the name of Terry Bradshaw, who won it back in 1978. So they fixed arguably their weakest position, and now they're looking pretty good. Texans have not had an MVP yet. JJ was really close though. The Oilers slash Titans have had two MVPs. Earl Campbell being the first one back in 1979. And then most recently, Steve Air McNair back in 2003. All of a sudden, they have one of the best running back rooms in the video and last but not least the vikings who have the first guy to win mvp as a defensive player alan page who won it in 1971 as a d tackle and then they had fran tarkenton win mvp in 1975 and then adrian all day peterson got it done in 2012 him and justin jefferson on the same offense is going to be scary so many brand new 99s in the video every mvp back in the league Get your predictions in. Perfect time to do it right now. Me personally, I'll probably be wrong because there's a lot of good teams. This is going to be a very entertaining season. We will hop in during the playoffs and watch a bunch of games. But you know what? In the AFC, I I'm going to go with the Dolphins. I think Dan Marino to, uh, to Tyreek is going to be insane. And in the NFC, give me the Vikings. You have a 99 overall quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. That offense is going to be nasty. OJ Simpson and Thurman Thomas helped the Bills get the one seed. Lamar and the Ravens end up second. Titans, Browns.
Browns, Raiders, Jaguars, and Chiefs make it to the playoffs so Tom Brady does not get into the postseason with the Patriots. Once again, my pick in the AFC does not make the Dolphins. Peyton and the Colts go 5-12, and and Elway, who was starting for the Broncos, takes them to a 7-10 and record. AFC was a bloodbath. But LT helped the Giants get the one seed in the NFC. Him and Y.A. Tittle, they go 14-3. and Niners end up second. Cowboys, Vikings, Packers, Panthers, and Falcons. So at least my NFC pick made it. The Eagles barely miss out. The Rams with Warner and Marshall Falk go below 500. Commanders had a bunch of 99. Surprised they didn't make it. Barry and the Lions go 3-14. and That's really shocking. Now I'm going to scroll through a lot of these stats, man, just so you guys can slow it down. Pause if you want to. To see what your quarterback was able to put up. You know, the quarterback of your favorite team. Mahomes had the most passing yards. Fields had the least. Matty Ice had the most passing touchdowns of anyone in this experiment. He turned back the clock and stepped up in a big way for the Falcons. There's a lot of good ratios. A lot of guys with one or two interceptions on the season. But Earl Campbell had 2,200 yards, 6.6 yards a carry to lead everyone. Allen also had 2,000 yards. I don't think that's ever happened in NFL history for two guys to break the 2,000 yard barrier on the ground in the same exact season, man. Absolutely filthy season from those two guys and then Jim Brown there's a lot of other guys who had great seasons as well you see these quarterbacks with, with some good rushing seasons Marcus Allen with 26 rushing touchdowns LT try to replicate his record setting season when he had the most rushing touchdowns in one year he was second with 25 and then as you can see all these other running backs I mean this is just a stag season for the running games all over the NFL as for receiving Cooper Cup still led the way if you haven't noticed there was no wide receiver that have won MVP. It's really hard to do it as a wide receiver. Jerry Rice never did it. You know, Randy Moss, like if they never did it, it's going to be really, really tough for anyone to make it happen. Most receptions went to Cooper Cup. I mean, that's a guy that won the triple crown as a wide receiver and still didn't get it done. So I, I don't know what you're going to have to do to make it happen. Maybe get like 3,000 yards receiving, 30 touchdowns. It's going to take something crazy, but yeah, hey, a lot of wide receivers had good seasons during this experiment on defense. Fence, Quincy Williams with the most tackles. Most sacks went to Vaughn. He breaks the NFL record. Crosby, Donald, and then LT in the top five. Look at Hubbard in the top five as well. Is Alan Page anywhere? Oh, yeah, there he is. Okay, eight and a half sacks. I must have scrolled past him. Yeah, I probably did, but nine tags for loss. Solid season. Probably facing a lot of double teams. He led his team in sacks. As for interceptions, we had a ton of guys with four INTs. As for kicking, Mark Mosley tied for the highest field goal percentage. Only missed one on the season. And he was 53 of 53 in terms of extra points. Lamar takes home MVP on the Ravens. Mahomes ends up second. Matty Ice ends up third. I mean, this MVP has to count for like two. If you win MVP and we bought back every other MVP ever, and then you win it again, I, that, that's just insane. Lamar is different. A lot of MVPs or former MVPs in the top 10. I think Dak and Jalen Hurts are the only guys in here that have never won it. Coach of the year goes to Brian Dayball. OPOY goes to Earl Campbell in the AFC. LT and Marcus Allen right behind him. DPOY goes to Vaughn. I mean, he set the record. In the NFC, it goes to Aaron Donald. And then Adrian Alday Peterson wins OPOY. Marshall and Sean Alexander end up second and third. Here's a look at the playoff bracket. We're going to watch the divisional round matchups. But first, let's sim the wild card. The MVP gets it done. The Ravens and Lamar beat the Jaguars. Niners beat the Falcons by six. Mahomes and the Chiefs go home to the Titans. The Pack Packers win 27-6 over Cam and the Panthers. The Raiders obliterate the Browns 42-7. And then the Cowboys take care of Adrian and the Vikings 35-25. And now they're taking on the Niners. Giants taking on the Packers. Bills taking on the Raiders. And then the Ravens versus the Titans. Let's go ahead and watch one drive from each team. Emmett Smith in the backfield. Probably some nostalgia right there for the older Cowboys fans. He gets stuffed on his first carry. Chance for the Niners to force a three and out on their first defensive possession. Emmett has only touched the ball once. Dak gonna try to take off. He's gonna scramble for the first and then some. What a run. This is where Emmett Smith thrives on the goal line. Second and goal. They're handing it off to the fullback. Cowboys strike first in this one. Time to see what Montana and this offense have in store for us. First play. George Kittle gets the first down. Third and six. Let's see if they have to settle for the field goal. Shotgun for Montana. Good protection. He's going for it all. Incomplete pass, good coverage by Gilmore.
score. Cowboys hold them to a field goal. And it looks like we might have ourselves a classic already. Let's see if that statement holds true as we sim all the way to the fourth quarter. Niners take the lead early in the second, but the Cowboys end up taking it into halftime. We got a back and forth battle. We're on the seesaw in the fourth quarter. Niners take the lead back, but Dallas does the same. The very next possession, 35-31. McCaffrey right up the gut, getting the first down. San Fran down four, needs a touchdown to win it. How do you leave Micah Parsons unblocked? Just miscommunication on that right side of the offensive line. Kittle gonna get some of those yards back, but it's fourth and six. San Fran only has one timeout left. This could be the game. Montana in the shotgun incomplete. Ayuk looking for the flag. Dak outplays Joe Montana. Four touchdowns, no picks. 145.8 pass rating. Now the run game for the Niners was killing it. Okay, Debo had two rushing touchdowns. McCaffrey, of course, had that one. But Dallas did just enough to take them to the next round. Our next matchup, we have the Bills with two MVPs taking on the Raiders, who have three MVPs. Allen incomplete on his first pass, but he has 299 overall running backs to help him get the offense going. Thurman Thomas in the backfield on second down Allen finds Diggs but they really have a three and out on their first drive without either of their MVP RBs touching the football Allen dropping back on a fine game Davis and keep the chains moving another pass for Buffalo finally one of their running backs touches it Thurman Thomas uh oh I form formation this has to be a run yes sir OJ Simpson first carry already breaking tackles third and one though empty backfield Thurman I think is in a slot right there on Allen's right right side let's see what the play call is zone from the Raiders Diggs finds a soft spot Thurman in the backfield it's a play action Allen finding Kincaid touchdown Buffalo what a drive how does Rich Gannon in this offense respond first play read option he loses two yards third and 12 a couple plays later Marcus Allen hasn't touched it yet and he's not going to unless they can keep the chains moving what a dot Jacoby Myers getting them across midfield now he had to change his number and give it to Ken Stabler, but he's being a good sport about it, not letting that affect his play. While Devontae with the rare drop, this is the last play of the first quarter. If you're enjoying the video and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing, man? Go ahead and hit that button. Here comes the blitz. Adams drops two in a row. Now that's actually insane. You don't see it. A future Hall of Famer dropping too many catches in a row. Nice breakup by Teron Johnson. Raiders at least move down the field into field goal range. Carlson gonna attempt, I think this is like a 50 51 yarder to help get Las Vegas on the board. So a rough start from one of their best players, but they still end up taking the lead in the second quarter. Buffalo takes it back right before halftime. Devontae ends up catching a touchdown in the third. You knew you couldn't keep him down for too long. And it's his team that's moving on to the conference championship. Allen and the Bills lose 31-21. He had no mistakes though. Pretty solid game from both quarterbacks, Gannon and Allen. The other Allen, Marcus had five yards of carry, two broken tackles. OJ had three broken tackles. They couldn't catch him. Stephon Diggs, 228 receiving yards. Jacoby had 174. Adams ended up with two receiving touchdowns. Five sacks from Max Crosby. Unbelievable performance from him. This game was a thriller. Now we're back in the NFC. Looking at the Giants take on the Packers. YA Tittle at QB. Packers sent a blitz on the first play. Now all of their MVPs are on offense. Offense, but the Giants MVPs at least one of them is on defense obviously YA Tittle at quarterback handed off to Saquon a huge upgrade at quarterback has them one game away from the NFC championship game third down and eight Tittle escaping the pocket can't get past Wyatt and the Giants start off with a three and out Rodgers in this offense he has Hornung Jim Taylor in the backfield I knew they had to go deep I mean you have five MVPs it would have been a travesty if they didn't at least get this far second and seven here comes the blitz from the g-man rogers is yet another quarterback in this video that has to deal with his wide receiver one dropping passes christian watson letting that one hit the ground here comes lt one of the scariest sights you'll ever see hitting rogers as he gets rid of it both teams start with a three and out now it's looking like we could have a low scoring defensive battle but right when i say that the giants end up getting a touchdown 
Clippers still have zero, a goose egg on the board heading into halftime. They finally get some points in the third quarter. They take the lead early in the fourth. We got ourselves a game. Last chance for New York. If they don't get it, their season ends. Who does YA decide to go to? It ends up being a Green Bay Packer. Rasul Douglas sends his team into the NFC Championship game. Rodgers with the better performance than YA. Hornung with a touchdown on the ground. Aaron had one. Rita even had one for the Giants. Watson bounced back after dropping that early pass. Maybe that's the formula to help your team win. There aren't many things I love more in life than snow games. In the NFL, we have the Titans versus the Ravens. McNair handing it off to Earl Campbell, who goes nowhere. Both teams' MVPs are on offense, so we will not see them go head-to-head -head technically. McNair on his first pass throws an incompletion but we have a rough in the passer they hit him a little bit too late and now they move the chains and they get another first down on his third and three steve in the shotgun four man rush from the ravens he's going to the end zone Traylon burks puts tennessee on top extra point by nick folk got blocked so now lamar has a chance to drive all the way down the field and take the lead they start off with the read option lamar can't shake loose he loses four let's see where Lamar decides to go. Here comes the blitz from Tennessee, and he's going down. Jeffrey Simmons forces a three and out. Titans extend their lead in the second quarter, and this one's not looking too good. Ravens finally get some points in the third, but could it be too little too late? Tennessee with the lead, they can just run the football and secure the W. They end up winning 34 to nine. Not the best game from Mr. Jackson. McNair had two touchdowns, no picks. Henry had three touchdowns, 5.2 yards of carry. Him and Campbell, I'm telling you, I, I don't know if anyone's going to be able to stop that duo. Four teams remain, Tennessee and Las Vegas, Dallas and Green Bay. Let's sim straight to the fourth quarter. If it's close, we will hop in. Dallas strikes first in this one, but the Packers take the lead in the second quarter. Another game where we have a seesaw, man. The NFC games have been really close. Dallas has a seven-point lead. Actually, make it a tie game heading into the fourth quarter. Both teams can't be stopped, and it's looking like this is where it all comes to a halt for the Green Bay Packers down 14 no timeouts left Rodgers needs a miracle and he's not gonna get it or will he they need an onside recovery can they make it happen what is oh, oh my goodness it went backwards Bruh. the Cowboys are moving on to the Super Bowl Prescott with another masterclass man outplaying Aaron Rodgers four touchdowns no picks for him Emma Smith with a nice game Jim Taylor two touchdowns on the ground now let's see who Dallas is gonna play in the big game. Rich Gannon versus Steve McNair. Two former MVPs going at it. Titans with the early lead, but Raiders are right there. We have another close game. Las Vegas has the lead in the third quarter, but Tennessee is staying within arm's distance. They just need a field goal to take the lead. It's third and three. Raiders down to one timeout, but they still have a two-point lead. They really need a stop right here. Earl Campbell pushing folks and getting the first down. That might be the dagger. Nine seconds left left for Marcus Allen, Rich Gannon, and the Raiders to save their season. They need to get in field goal range and stop the clock. Not looking like it's going to happen. They can't get out of bounds. And it's Tennessee who's going to get back to the Super Bowl. Last time they were here, they were one yard short. Let's see if Errol Campbell, Derrick Henry and company can change that. Look at all the rushing touchdowns in this game. Eight total from both teams man that's just insane hopkins had one let's see if he can get another one and help his team hoist the lombardi two teams left three mvps remain tennessee versus dallas emmett versus campbell and mcnair tennessee gets off to the early lead but you know dallas is not going away that easily man they've been in every single game obviously won every single game in this playoff run so far but they were down multiple possessions at halftime scraping back into this ball game tennessee with a two possession lead make it three the titans win their first super bowl in franchise history steve mcnair earl campbell two mvps help them make history and there you have it this is what would happen if you brought back every mvp in nfl history thanks for watching to the end i appreciate you guys so much for all the support on the channel that was nasty this entire playoff run four touchdowns again four touchdowns for earl campbell unbelievable performance he won super bowl mvp CD Lamb had three. I mean, it is just a nasty game from both teams. Great season.